I'm Lucy Owen and this is my dog, Buddy, my reading companion. <laughs> I've written a book called The Sea House. Now, I absolutely love reading. I love how books can transport you anywhere in the world, into different worlds, how you get to meet different characters, different people, how you get to learn about different things, how you get to learn about yourself and about other people. Um, I remember reading from quite a young age. I used to love Enid Blyton books. I don't know whether you've ever read any of her books. One of my favorites was The Magic Faraway Tree. And I just loved how, oh, there are these incredible fairy folk living in a tree and that you could go to the top of the tree and there would be different kinds of worlds that would arrive there. It was just amazing. Um, reading can be difficult sometimes though, can't it? Um, we can all find some words a little bit difficult to say sometimes and perhaps we don't understand them. Um, I actually read for a living now. I read the news for the BBC and sometimes even I come across words even now that I don't quite know how to say and sometimes I don't understand them. So what I've learned to do is just to ask and that's okay because we all sometimes find things that we don't understand. And that's okay, because you ask and that's how you learn. So never be afraid to do that. It's okay. I still do it. <laughs> um, the other thing I would say about reading is that the key to really enjoying it is to find things that you love. And we all like different things. We all like different kinds of stories, don't we? You might like mysteries. You might like fairy tales. You might like adventure stories. I think the key is to find the kind of thing that really interests you and to find books that, that fit the bill and to find authors that you like as well. Um, perhaps you like authors that write in a funny way or in a mysterious way, but just find what you really love and that will make reading really fun because that's what it's all about, enjoying it and having fun, isn't it, buds? The Sea House was inspired by a holiday that I went to, to an island called Barbados in the Caribbean. It's a lovely sunny island with beautiful golden sandy beaches and palm trees and beautiful turquoise sea. And I remember snorkeling in the ocean and I was just absolutely amazed that beneath the surface of the sea there were these incredible fish and beautiful coral and it was this whole world oh it was just amazing and I just thought right I really really want to write about this because I want to celebrate our incredible oceans I mean look at that behind me even on a gray day it's beautiful so I really wanted to celebrate um our incredible seas and the wonderful creatures um, that live in them because I also wanted to inspire um, a love I hope of our seas and a realization about how special they are and how important it is for us to do what we can to protect them too you've probably heard a lot about the plastic pollution in our seas so I hoped that um, by writing a celebration of the incredible fish and creatures that live in our seas it might help us all think about what we can all do to protect our oceans for the future and we can all play a part in that um, so yes I wanted us all to think about that when we read the book um, it was also inspired by an experience that I had um, Coral the girl in the book uh, loses both her parents um, and I lost my dad when I was a teenager, he died. And so the book is also about dealing with grief and sadness and how we can overcome that. Um, for Coral, it's through friendship. She has amazing friendships with these wonderful creatures in the book and that helps her get over this dark sadness that she has inside her. And I think we've all experienced some kind of sadness at one time or another, not necessarily losing a parent or family member or a pet, but I think we've all felt sad at some point, haven't we? So this book is about how I believe friendship can really help us through those, those sad times. 
and so the book is I hope about a love of the sea it's also about the power of friendship I'd like to tell you about two of my favorite characters in the book the first is a teeny teeny tiny sparkly little blue fish called fabulous and I actually saw a fish just like her when I was snorkeling on that holiday that I told you about and I just could not believe that there was a fish this bright and sparkly in our oceans I was absolutely amazed when I saw it so as soon as I got home I started googling about it and I discovered that this fish is called a damsel fish and when the fishes are young they're really super bright and sparkly and as they grow older they, they lose their sparkle a bit so I really wanted to include this fish um, as a main character in the story because it was just so incredible uh, the name for the fish also came from an actual real person when I was on that holiday I was walking along the beach and on this island um, lots of the local people sell mangoes on the beach and um, a guy came up to me and he said oh do you want to buy some mangoes and we just got chatting and I said oh it's really lovely to meet you and what's your name and he said I'm fabulous <laughs> I was like oh that's the best name ever so um, Fabulous really is a, a proper tropical Caribbean character. Um, she's a great, great character in the book. She's so fun. That's what I love about her. She's tiny, 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 super sparkly, but super brave. Even though she's small, she's full of courage. Um, she's so brave. In fact, at one point, she even risks her life to save her best friend, Coral. So she's courageous, brave, really loyal, a really great friend, someone you would really want on your side. She's also quite sassy, really confident, got a bit of a swagger about her. Um, so I just love her, she, she's really, really fun. She's the kind of friend that if you went down to the beach with, um, she'd really want to have an adventure and she'd really encourage you to do fun things. So I imagine that she'd really want to, if she's down on the beach here, she'd probably want to explore the rock pools and she'd take you climbing over the rocks and yeah, you'd always have a really great time if you were with Fabulous. My other favourite character in the book is a sea turtle called Ramon and this was also inspired by an experience I had. When I was out in the ocean, I actually swam with turtles and they were swimming really, really close to me. And I actually reached out and I touched the turtle's shell and felt it absolutely amazing. And again, that inspired me to find out a little bit more about turtles. And I put some fish facts actually in the back of the book and I discovered that sea turtles are some of the oldest creatures on this earth, um, turtle fossils have been found that are 150 million years old. And just to give you some perspective on this, dinosaurs became extinct 65 million years ago. So that just gives you some perspective, doesn't it? They're as old as the dinosaurs, probably even older. So that just amazed me that they're these incredible creatures that are still with us today. Um, what makes me slightly sad though is that lots of species of turtles are under threat of extinction so that was one of the reasons that I really wanted to include a turtle in the book I hope that people might want to find out a little bit more about turtles and realize that we need to really work hard to protect them and help them survive for millions of years to come so let me tell you about Ramon <laughs> he's he's quite an old turtle but he is very young at heart. He's kind of like a little bit of a rap dude. This is a picture of him right here. You can see he wears a shell on his head, like a rapper's cap, kind of to the side. And he's got all these jangly shell necklaces and he really loves to party. He loves music and he loves dancing. He's really fun. And I imagine if it was a really miserable wet weekend and you were at home with Ramon, it wouldn't be boring, it would be super fun. I imagine he'd get some music on and you'd be dancing and rapping and making up tunes and making up songs. I imagine he really would love 
to have a really nice feast. I imagine really loving tucking into food. So I reckon you'd head into the kitchen and you'd maybe rustle up a nice spicy Caribbean curry and really tuck in and enjoy your food and dancing and having a great party. So yeah, that's why I love these characters. They're, they're full of fun and happiness and excitement. I'd like to read you an extract from my book, The Sea House. And this is right at the beginning of the book when Coral wakes up and her house is very different. When she woke next, Coral didn't know what time it was, but she knew something was very, very different. Her long hair felt as if it was swaying. She turned her head a little and felt a ripple move through it right to the very tips. She tried to sit up, but that too was very, very different. It was a familiar feeling, but she couldn't think what it was. She felt slower, but at the same time lighter. It was almost as if she was under... <gasps> Coral's eyes widened. Underwater! But that wasn't possible. How could she be underwater in her own bedroom? What had happened? How was she even breathing? Coral exhaled, and a stream of bubbles came out of her mouth. She looked around. Her curtains were waving gently around her window like long strands of yellow gingham seaweed. Apart from that, the room looked the same, although there was no doubt about it. It was underwater. Suddenly, out of the corner of her eye, the far end of the room, Coral saw tiny blue flashes of light. Something very small was watching her, twinkling, sparkling and darting from side to side. The flashing grew faster and faster. Whatever it was, spun around, dived down, shot up high and whizzed back. Coral tried to follow it, but it was making her feel dizzy and a little bit seasick. The zipping and glittering stopped directly in her line of sight. This glimmering little thing was looking straight at her. It started to quiver, throwing shimmering jets of light around the bedroom like a sparkling diamond. Then it drew itself up and zoomed at top speed straight at her. <gasps> Coral froze. She braced herself for the worst. Something was attacking her and she had no idea what to do. Her bedroom was underwater and now some sort of weird alien sea being was washing right for her. <gasps> She sat still, screwed her eyes tight, tight shut, and braced herself, ready to take whatever was coming. She waited. Nothing. She waited a little longer. Still, nothing. Coral didn't quite have the courage to open her eyes. She could sense something very close. She felt slight stirrings in the water in front of her face. But somehow she knew she didn't need to be afraid. Slowly, she opened one eye and then the other. What she saw was totally and utterly unexpected. Hovering right in front of Coral's face was the tiniest, most exquisite little fish she had ever seen. Its excited, trembling body was a dark, velvety blue-black covered with glittering spots that seemed to shimmer with a life of their own. Bright blue, pale blue, turquoise, silver, deep violet, all twitching and gleaming, illuminating her room like a disco ball. Coral was transfixed. She had never seen such a wonderful little fish. I'm fabulous, said a sweet voice. Wow, breathed Coral. Yes, you are. No, the fish giggled like soft, tinkling bells. Fabulous, that's my name. And as if to prove just how fabulous she was, she flipped a triple backward somersault and blew a huge stream of bubbles right at Coral. I have two challenges for you. Now Coral wakes up in her house and it's been magically transformed into this incredible underwater sea world. So I want you to think about if you could magically transform your house into a completely different world, what kind of world would you have in your house? 
be absolutely anything. Perhaps your house would be transformed into a jungle and you'd have wild animals roaming around it. Maybe it would be a woodland house and you'd have a giant great big tree in your living room and your carpet would be made out of moss. What about a space house? And maybe there'd be no gravity in your house, so you'd be floating around like an astronaut. For me, I think I would have, ooh, maybe a fairground house, and there'd be loads of fairground rides in my house. Maybe my stairs would be like a helter-skelter, um, or, or would it be a chocolate house? And all my furniture would be made out of chocolate, and I could just literally eat my sofa. <laughs> anyway, have a think about what you would like your house to be, what magical world you would create, and maybe think about all the different things that you could do in there and describe it. Hope you have fun doing that. Another challenge, um, you know I told you about how I put fish facts in the back of the book because I was so oh, amazed by our incredible seas and the incredible creatures that live in them. Well, why don't you think about a sea creature that really interests you? It could be absolutely anything. It could be, I don't know, a shark or a dolphin or ooh, a jellyfish, absolutely anything. I want you to think about a sea creature that you find interesting. Find out three facts about that sea creature and then maybe create your own character around it. So give that creature a name. Maybe describe what sort of creature and friend that would be and maybe even draw it afterwards. Maybe it's a shark and you could draw a fun little shark or whatever. Anyway, I hope you have that.